I'm back with investigative reporter Melanie Woodrow, who recently did an investigation on the abuse that's rampant dealing with prescription medications. You know, one of the things I see with drug-seeking behavior is a patient will come in and they will ask for a specific drug, they know exactly how much of it they want, and they say, no, 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 that doesn't work for me. The only thing that works for me is this. And luckily, in some states, there's reporting available. And I can actually find out if maybe they had a prescription filled in a different ER 10 hours ago, which often happens. So what I'm trying to figure out is these pill mills, that's their informal name. How mm -hmm. in the world do they work and function? Well, basically, I've been told by law enforcement officials, it's very easy. You go to one, you make an appointment. Sometimes they'll ask you to bring in an MRI report from another doctor. They don't care what it says. They just need the paper trail. There's an exchange of cash, maybe three to $500. That covers your appointment, and it also covers your prescriptions. As I said, sometimes as many as three different narcotics. And this is legal. Well. Because I'm trying to figure out, number one, who these doctors are. Uh, doctors take a Hippocratic Oath to do no mm -hmm. harm, and clearly, whoever these physicians are, uh, they should lose their medical license, in my humble opinion. Um, but I'm just trying to figure out, a pill mill like that, the one you covered, what, did, did the DEA, did they talk to you about what put, what set them off to actually be able to go in, and, and clearly someone was getting arrested? Yeah, no arrests there just yet. They did handcuff okay. some folks for safety reasons, but are actually working on still building their case. But it's just like you said, people going in, they know what they're asking for, and we're finding that there's a lot of communication online. So you see these online forums where people are saying, here's where you can go to get this, or this doctor will prescribe what you want. We've also heard that people are then taking a portion of their prescription, selling it at a premium, so that they'll have more cash to go back and feed their own habit. It breaks my heart, the fact that prescription medicines cause more deaths than heroin, cocaine, methamphetamines combined, because it does start with physician prescribing behavior. This was never the intent. The intent was to help people in pain. We need to do a better job of this, and luckily a lot of states have adopted reporting systems. Now it sounds like in your investigation, Missouri is a state that has yet to do that. That's correct. In the states where they have the legislation and it's been funded and it's operational, as you said, a doctor or a pharmacist could go into a database and see if the patient has gone somewhere else, has had a prescription filled somewhere else recently. In Missouri, they're still arguing whether or not that violates patient privacy rights, but we've seen some success in the states where it exists. So in Iowa, for example, the people seeing 15 or more prescribers decreased by 72% in the first year they had the program. In Kentucky, the amount of time that it would take to investigate one of these so-called doctor shoppers went from 156 days to 16 days with the program. Well, we'll see. What a great report. Thank you so very much.